Hi, my name is Rich Harrington and I'd like to show you today how to use HDR toning in the black and white adjustment layer to create more dramatic HDR images. So let's jump in here. We're going to switch over to Adobe Bridge for a second and I've navigated to five images that were shot as a bracketed series. You see there's slight variations in the exposure compensation and the shutter speed and this gives us a wider tonal range. We can go ahead and merge these together, select all, and choose Tools, Photoshop, Merge to HDR Pro. Now this is going to switch over to Photoshop, open up those five raw files here, and start to link them together into a new image. It takes a little bit of time as they all open and attempts to auto-align it, but it works very well. There we go, the Merge to HDR Pro dialog box comes up, and we can now start to fix this image. One of the first things I'm going to do is show you that there are some monochromatic options here, but I'd rather do this by hand and tweak it myself. Let's go ahead and switch to photorealistic, and we'll start by pulling up the detail, just so we get a nice dramatic image. Now, 300% is a little strong there, so we'll back it off. Looks pretty good there, really seeing nice texture there in those columns. And we can come down here and play a little bit with the shadows to see if we want to make those more dramatic or not. So as we pull that up, I kind of like that in there. And we'll play with recovering a little bit of the highlights there. Can blow them out or pull them back down. That looks pretty good there. One of the other things that's often used with HDR is a bit of a glow. Now I'm going to crank this up here and play with the strength. What I'm trying to do is just get a little bit of an ethereal look there in this church image. I like how that's working. And for preview here, we can pull down the saturation if we want to see it. It's not bad. I'm going to take all of that out actually with the black and white adjustment. So to make that easier, I'm actually going to boost the color here a little bit so I have more to work with when I manually do my black and white adjustment. That looks pretty good. And we'll click OK. Those five images are going to be merged together. Okay, it's looking good. There's three little things I want to fix. The picture is a bit crooked. We've got this distracting foreground object. And I'm going to crop the composition a little bit to take this person out. So here we go. Let's grab the measure tool. It's located right up here. There we go, ruler. And click along a straight line here. There we go. And just click the straighten button. Let's take advantage of some cloning here to remove this but we'll use the vanishing point command to do it. Vanishing point allows for perspective cloning so this makes it much easier to define out an area here using a perspective plane and as you click it makes a nice plane there. If it didn't look right just drag those points until it goes solid blue. This allows you to actually clone and the texture will get bigger. Now cloning is just like anything else. You could actually adjust the hardness of the brush, nice soft brush if you want, adjust its diameter, and it's going to behave just like what you're used to. Option click, line up your texture, and take out that distracting object. Nice soft brush blends very, very well. That looks good. I'll click OK to apply it. Got rid of the distracting cable there. Press C for crop, and we'll just choose from our crop presets. I'm going to go with a 4 by 6 inch image here, and start to drag that out. There we go. Got the perspective grids there if you need them. That looks good. And we'll apply it. Now that both resized and changed the crop at the same time. Looks good, and we are ready to do the black and white conversion. My favorite way of doing this is with the black and white adjustment layer. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that and grab the on image tool here which allows me to click in the image and drag. So for example these boards are being mostly controlled by the yellow slider. That looks pretty good. Click over here and you see it's more of the red. So this is allowing us to individually tone that area. And you can go through and see that different areas affect it and of course play with the sliders manually on your own. Like in there we're tweaking the black and white conversion of those windows up top where the blue sky is showing through. That looks good. I'm going to finesse this a little bit with some curves and we're just going to go with some contrast. There we go. 
like the stronger contrast. Looks good. And we'll finish this out with a little bit of tinting and blurring. So there's lots of ways to tint. It's ultimately up to you. One way is to use a hue saturation adjustment layer and just click the colorize button and this will allow you to dial in a hue that you want and adjust its saturation and lightness. That's feeling pretty good to me there and all I'd like to do now is a little bit of blurring at the edges. I'm going to just do select all and choose edit copy merged which allows me to then paste a flattened copy on top. I did this so I could do a little bit of defocusing. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur and we're just going to defocus those edges a bit. Looks good. Grab our elliptical mask and define a centered area and feather that out extensively with select modify feather. There we go. You can nudge that selection around if needed, continue to feather it more. And you're just trying to get a nice gentle edge. When you have that, click the Add Layer Mask button to mask the image. Now in this case it's inverted, so we'll just select that mask and press Command I and it blurs out the edges while drawing the focus into the middle. Notice there how the mask is creating a nice gentle transition. I'm happy with that. We'll just back off the opacity a little bit more. Looks pretty good. And use that same mask to darken the edges. So let's just command click to load it. We'll grab an exposure adjustment and pull down the edges a little bit so they're darker. There we go. Looks pretty good. And finish that out with a little lift to the overall image just in the middle there to help it pop. That looks great. So a high dynamic range, custom black and white conversion with a little bit of a sepia tone in there. And I'm very happy with how that image looks. My name's Rich Harrington. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to get more out of using HDR for your black and white conversions as well.